four crippled reactors, a constant buildup of contaminated water, radioactive leaves threatening the environment. The people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi are struggling to control the plant. How will they stop the leaks and decommission the facilities? Get the latest on the aftermath of the nuclear accident with the in-depth reports and special features. Nuclear Watch, only on Newsline. Workers go inside Japan's damaged nuclear plant every day, but the public rarely gets a glimpse of what they do. NHK World's Yoichiro Tataiwa went inside the Fukushima Daiichi plant to take a closer look as teams continue the dangerous and complicated job of removing fuel rods from one of the reactor buildings. This is a part of Japan few people see anymore. We approach Fukushima Daiichi by bus, accompanied by Tokyo Electric Power Company officials. Now we are approaching to the checkpoint set by municipality. Uh, this is about uh, five kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And beyond here, access is severely restricted. This is where the uh, con control center of the Fukushima Daiichi, where we're going to go in. The next step for anyone who wants to get closer to the damaged reactors is to put on protective gear. The walkers are removing spent fuel rods from a pool in the reactor for building. This unit didn't suffer a meltdown, but radiation levels remain high because it's close to the other reactors where meltdowns did occur. The workers extract highly radioactive spent fuel assemblies from their racks inside the pool and place them in a special container. The whole process is carried out under water. It shields the radiation emitted by the fuel rods and keeps them cool. Exposing the rods to the air could lead to a massive release of radiation. Workers know there is no room for error. Each team has six highly qualified members. Two men control a crane to remove the fuel assemblies. Two others work at the eyes of the operation. They control an underwater camera and lighting equipment. They also record the procedure. The remaining pair supervise the operation and keeps track of radiation levels. If they detect high levels, they coordinate an evacuation. Six teams rotate in shifts of maximum two hours per day. Right. To give you an idea of the levels of radiation workers face, this device shows 100 microsieverts per hour, which means if I stand here 10 hours, that would exceed the limit for civilians. But workers here have 50 times higher limit. So far, radiation levels here have been kept lower than we initially estimated. We will continue our efforts to reduce the workers' risk of radiation exposure as much as possible by improving the working environment. Once the container is loaded with few assemblies, Walkers transfer it to a storage facility. The teams have to remove more than 1,500 assemblies from the reactor for building. Then they will extract fuel from the reactor one, two, and three buildings. Topical managers say they expect the entire operation to be finished by 2020. Then crew will have to remove molten fuels from crippled reactors. There is no shortage of risk factors here. Workers have many stressful and difficult days ahead of them.
Academics in Japan say the panel that advises the government on nuclear power should change its priorities. The Atomic Energy Commission has spent over 50 years promoting the use of nuclear energy. The academics say its members should focus on tackling problems the industry has created. The experts say the commission should address a limited number of key challenges. They say those challenges should include disposal of radioactive waste and helping government leaders decide how to deal with the crippled nuclear plant in Fukushima. They say the commission should also make sure nuclear technology is only used for peaceful purposes such as power generation and research. The experts plan to finalize their recommendations next week. Today marks 1,000 days since the world's worst nuclear crisis began at Daiichi Nuclear Power Plant in Fukushima, Japan. But despite widespread contamination and the inability to stop hundreds of thousands of tons of radioactive water from pouring into the Pacific, apparently Japan is doing a great job managing the cleanup. This week, the International Atomic Energy Agency actually gave praise to Japan for their excellent cleanup efforts and proactive approach toward addressing complex challenges posed by the nuclear disaster. Ain't that cute? giving praise to TEPCO, the same company that let mice eat through the wires of the cooling pumps of the nuclear reactors. Not to mention the company's sordid history of falsifying data sets in the years prior to the meltdown to cover up how faulty the reactors really were. As you can see, international media like The Guardian is painting a slightly different picture of the crisis. Look, it's totally irresponsible, but not surprising for the IAEA to be giving props to TEPCO. After all, the entire point of the organization is to promote nuclear energy. This nuclear watchdog is really nothing more than a nuclear lapdog, and it says so right in their charter. Now, aside from TEPCO's gross mismanagement of the fallout, check this out. They've actually hired members of a crime syndicate to help the cleanup. You heard me right, TEPCO hired members of the Yakuza Mafia to help with the Fukushima meltdown. And folks, the irony here is that while Tokyo Electric was outsourcing their problems to professional gangsters, those gangsters were then outsourcing those jobs to homeless Japanese people. Yes, not only was the Yakuza forcing homeless people to work on the hazardous waste site, but they then kicked these people to the curb after they began suffering the deadly effects of radiation poisoning. But hey, I guess that's the kind of proactive approach the IAEA likes to see from its nuclear partners. While this controversial secrecy bill in Japan has sparked a strong public opposition and protests, the bill drastically expands the definition of state secret and increases the possible jail sentence for those found guilty of leaking information to 10 years. According to a poll by Japan's Asahi Shimbun, 61% of voters think the bill is being passed too fast. Three quarters of them think the law would create new secrets rather than strengthening the protection of currently existing ones. Protesters say the bill is an authoritarian move which could lead Japan back to the Second World War era. They said the forced passing of the bill is a form of political terrorism infringing people's right to know and the freedom of expression. If the bill is passed, it will represent the covering up of people's ears and voices. We ask that this bill be abolished. The word secret causes anxiety among people, especially when it is used by the government. Though we don't understand the procedures in the bill, we feel something bad could happen.
Towns and cities in Japan are taking on a seasonal glow as Christmas approaches. Elaborate Christmas displays feature a mix of sound and images. In Tokyo, a unique attraction is capturing people's hearts by letting them help create the magic. NHK World's Akane Nakajima has more. In a business district in Tokyo, this public square is blanketed with hundreds of thousands of LED bulbs. Blue lights turn the square into a sea of coral and pearls. Animated images of marine life are projected onto this building using projection mapping technology. They tell the story of marine creatures trying to collect Christmas illuminations. The title, White Christmas in the Sea. This spectacular display draws in the crowds Many people drop by after work to have a look. Organizers expect about 350,000 visitors this year. This program has a special feature. Sounds made by the audiences triggers changes in the projection. When visitors clap their hands, the images change. When the sound of clapping matches the display's soundtrack, a school of fish appears. By applauding, the audience helps the fish defeat their deadly enemy, the shark. Tomoya Takahashi created this program. It took him and his team two months to develop. This system uses microphones to pick up only the sounds of the applause made by the audience. Projection mapping technology changes images based on the signals from the microphones. Like, for example, first, nothing appears on the screen. But when you clap your hands, the bubbles appear. People are thrilled when they change the images this way. I didn't know that you could have so much fun by clapping hands. I'm glad we could take part. I like this new idea of audience participation. This year, we wanted to make something interactive. What's good about the program is people of all ages can enjoy it simply by applauding. People can enjoy the illumination event each evening until Christmas Day. Akane Nakajima, NHK World, Tokyo. Nuclear safety officials say they have located potentially dangerous radioactive material that's used for medical purposes. It had been removed from a stolen truck earlier in the week. The material Cobalt 60 and the truck were found abandoned outside Mexico City on Wednesday. Two armed men stole the vehicle on Monday, not far from where the cargo was found. Officials say the radioactive material had been removed from its protective container, putting anyone who came in contact with it at risk of radiation exposure. Authorities sealed off a 500-meter perimeter around the material and sent a team in to recover it. They say there is no health risk for local residents. Cobalt-60 is used in cancer treatments and other medical applications. The International Atomic Energy Agency has been urging countries to take steps to prevent the material from falling into the wrong hands. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video. And, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.